This is a 3D printed lathe. It can turn plastic, wood, and even steel. Let's talk about that. Lathes are the machines that made everything. The ability to turn round components is fundamental to all other machinery. And 3D printed lathes have been a pretty popular project in the community for over a decade now. I have also made several attempts of my own, including this massive waste of time on screen now. But learning from these failures has culminated in this. This is version 2. Version 1 worked, but I found a lot of play, which I determined was coming from the headstock, so I made version 2 to be much more rigid. The build begins with some printed components. The shell needs a few modifications before it can all be put together, including some heated inserts, coupling nuts, and the inner bolts for the motor mounting rail. Into the base, a whole variety of bolts with T-nuts are also inserted, along with the bolts for securing the headstock. The headstock itself has an array of five bearings and spaces which need to be pre-assembled before it can be enclosed in the headstock. I'm using 2020 extrusion for a bed, which have a set of covers and spaces installed before they can be slid into their mounting points. The top cover is then installed, followed by the headstock. A rod is installed to try and ensure some sort of axis between the bed and the headstock. At this point the lathe is now ready for cement. Using stir sticks and a palm sander, the mixture can be worked into every part of the form. This took me around 20 minutes to do. After another 30 minutes, the now partially set concrete can be scraped off to form the curved portions. This is then left to dry for at least a day. Through the power of movie magic, we are now back on version 2, which you can see I taped up to make cleaning easier. I left the layer lines till now since it would make sanding easier. I've recently learnt online that petroleum jelly can be used to restore colour to sanded prints, and I use that here to great effect. With the cement dryer, we can install the motor and work holding. Here, I'm using a sewing machine motor. We install the tool rest and the lathe is now ready to use. You may now notice one of its most defining features, that being that it has no cross slide. This may sound absurd to some, but the idea was inspired by my watchmaker's lathe, which you can see uses a similar setup. The tool I'm using is from my larger lathe, and I have it held in a printed handle. For the first real part, we're going to upgrade the lathe, using itself. I would like to use this small drill chuck, but the adapter it came with has a 3mm bore, and I would like to use 8mm rod, as it's the same as the headstock. I insert the steel into the headstock, and after bluing and marking a 12mm section, insert the end into a tailstock slash support. This is a 15cm length of steel being turned. It is reasonably slow going and I stop several times to check the dimensions, but after a couple of minutes the cut is complete. The surface finish is decent and the part fits well. With this I can now drill holes which I'll need later. For a second quick project, I take a length of 6mm steel. Bluing the end, I turn a rough sphere and some relief behind it. This could be a ball joint, it could be a knob, I just wanted to show turning a more complex shape. For the final project, I wanted to turn both hardwood and metal, including a drilling operation. This begins with a length of 10mm aluminum. I mark and turn a decorative feature into the side of the head. Following this, I use a centre drill to start a 3mm hole. 
This works, but I really need a more powerful motor for drilling. It really struggled here. I repeat this on the other side of the part. Next, I set up the lathe for wood turning. It is actually quite ideal as a small wood lathe. This is a length of olive that has been drying for a few years. I wanted a 12mm brass face, but I realised I didn't have a 12mm collet, so instead I thread on two printed faces. So I hope that gives a good idea of what it could do. I'd now like to finish up with a cost breakdown and some thoughts on the project. Here's what it all costs. Left column is buying everything completely new. Right is how much it cost me. I removed costs like the collets because I use them elsewhere, and several parts I've gotten for free from taking stuff apart over the years. Regular office printers are a great source of mechatronic components. I've paid nothing for all of this. For $100, I think this is absolutely worth it. For almost $200, that's a solid maybe. So its worth really varies on the individual how thrifty you are, and the second-hand market in your area. I'd also be remiss to not touch on who this is meant for. It doesn't replace this, it doesn't replace this, and it doesn't replace this. It's in a class of its own far cheaper, but also less useful than any of those. The operations it can perform, however, still provide value that opens up a lot of possibilities. I'd also say that it's far better value than buying something like this, which is in a similar price category. Overall, I'm happy with its function, accuracy, and how it feels to use. There are still some changes I'd like to make, however, including some sort of copy lathe function, a better way to drill, and a way to properly extend the bed. Most importantly, I need an adjustable tool rest. You can see when I'm cutting. There's a sweet spot when the tool is at the right height. Also worth noting is that I'm not using the proper tools for wood or metal turning, so it can only get easier from here. This project has been in the back of my mind for some time, and I'm happy to finally have a release out there, but there will definitely still be changes. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.